impossible plant, yeah, just off straight. So. And that when you're playing well, all these little things happen to you. Everything seems to open up nicely for you. Twenty-two. Stephen went back home after his first round match and relaxed. Some players prefer to stay around the venue and practice here in the Crucible. They have three practice tables. I remember when we didn't have any practice tables, you, you had to get onto the main table for a little 20-minute session. is developing into a very good chance for Stephen Hendry here. Yeah, I wonder what the odds would have been uh, Stephen Hendry beating John Higgins 13-4, John. Long odds, no doubt about that, but... Well, this will be a match that John Higgins will just have to forget about, really, because, uh, as I say, he didn't have the best run of the ball, and Stephen, of course, is always someone, I mean, John would have been brought up with Stephen as his hero. And it's quite interesting, I was thinking last night, two people that John Higgins would have really inspired him as a youngster, <laughs> Stephen Hendry this match, and two years ago, Steve Davis, who he lost to. Coincidence? I don't know. 37. Well, John Higgins was Stephen Hendry's practice partner for a good number of years up at the Sterling uh, Spencer's Club, which is no longer there. And, uh, they've played thousands of frames together. And John Higgins would have learned so much from Stephen, but who would have thought that uh, the master would have been back 43. giving the pupil a bit of a lesson here. It's incredible. And of course, after uh, John Higgins, Stephen Maguire used to go and practice with Stephen. So I think that's the reason John got to be world number one and world champion so quickly. Yes, he certainly uh, inspired a lot of snooker, 49. young snooker players, did Stephen Hendry in Scotland. 50. So 30 points to the lead. This pink will put him 36 points in front, or he's looking at the black to the middle, whichever offers him better position. This pink, two more reds, two more colours, and that's end of match. I see no reason why he would make a mistake. Terrific performance in his first round match, and to be fair, he's played good, solid stuff here. RK maybe got dragged down a little bit last night with the type of game it turned out to be. But uh, no doubt about it, Stephen Hendry is queuing beautifully. have been waiting years for Stephen Hendry to win, a, win his eighth world title They're waiting to write that headline King Hendry the eighth and who's to say he might not do it this year well he misses the red which would have just meant John Higgins would have come out and made a handshake but 44 points behind 43 remaining one snooker needed he'll play on And the red behind the pink is in the perfect position if he just screws the white back, if he's fairly straight on this pink. Great chance to put Stephen Hendry in a tough snooker. He could make this quite difficult. He wants to keep the red 
away from a cushion. It'd be Seven. nice if we could get the snooker and get the red near one of those bulk colours. I might be able to just swerve around the pink, hit the side cushion and hit the red. That's why I was thinking if he could keep the red away from the cushion. And he feels he can't swerve around the pink. It's more difficult going the right side of the table. I think he can just get a little swerve shot around the pink, hit the cushion below the middle pocket with lots of right hand side. Yeah, I agree with you, Dennis. If he can't come off the left hand side cushion, then this is a tough one to hit. Any two, three cushion escape is difficult. The blue's in the middle of the table, that's making it awkward. Good shot needed here. Lots of left hand side he's playing on this cue ball. Well, that's how close he had to go to the blue, but it's a great escape. <laughs> it really is a great escape. brought the red up and he's hit the blue this could be the end of yes the defending champion comes forward to show Stephen Henry's hand it's been a very disappointing defence but take nothing away from Stephen Henry what a performance to knock John Higgins out of this year's Betfred.com World Championship 13 frames to 4 can you believe it well, surprisingly one-sided in the end, and after that first session in which Stephen Hendry and both John and Andy produced some terrific stuff, how surprised are you at the manner of that defeat for the defending champion, first of all, Steve? I think it's always a shock when John Higgins doesn't fire on all the cylinders we know he can. Um, I suppose the clues were there that he's had a poor season by his standards, but you still expect him to come good on the big stage, so still a shock. Um, great for Stephen Hendry. Fantastic. Okay. Well, let's hear from the victor, Stephen Hendry. He's with Rob Walker. Stephen, this is turning into quite a run. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, obviously delighted to, to, to win the match. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit fortunate. It's probably it's the worst John's played at the Crucible last night uh, than he's ever played in his life. Um, you, can, you can never expect to get the amount of chances I was getting each frame against someone of his quality. So last night was a, a strange session of snooker, but... Um, Listen, you've got to take the win, you know, I beat the defending champion, I'm in the quarter-final, so I'm very happy. Were you surprised at how yesterday evening's session turned out? Yeah, very surprised. Um, I mean, John's not had his, his best season, obviously, he's, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's had a poor season by his standards. Um, but the, the mistakes he was making and the balls he was missing last night, it was, uh, it was a sort of shock to the system to me. But Because uh, after the first session, we both played pretty well, um, and I was expecting sort of a big, big game last night but it sort of never materialised. People are getting quite excited about this run that you're putting together. Where's it, where's it come from? I wouldn't call two matches a run. Well, I qualified at three matches. It might be a run, a small run. Um, that's a long way to go. I'm still in the tournament, so I'm very happy. What about Stephen Maguire, another all-Scottish clash? Yeah, yeah. I, I, listen, everything's a bonus for me at the moment. It's, uh, you know, I've made a maximum here. I'm having a fantastic tournament. I've, I've just been the defending champion. I've got uh, Maguire next, so yeah, I can't wait. Is it a case that you've just arrived here without any pressure, you're enjoying your snooker and you're just happy to see what comes? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I spent, you know, as well documented, I spent the week before the championship playing pool. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty much very relaxed. Well done, Stephen. Cheers, thank you. That's a secret. Everybody's taking up pool these days. Uh, but it, it is a, a wonderful surprise to see Stephen back in the quarterfinals for the 19th time, as, as Rob was saying there. But uh, when you think about his attitude coming in, what has differentiated, it, differentiated this from previous years, John? Well, he said himself, didn't he? Sometimes he felt like he's, he's if anything, over-prepared, put that many hours in, and he's just gone for a different approach entirely. I do think his coach, Chris Henry, has a little bit to do with it. I think Stephen's queuing and hitting the ball as well as I've seen for quite a while. I think he's rediscovered the middle of the white. I think that's very, very important. It sounds bizarre to say that. People aren't saying, well, he's a professional snooker player. Of course you can hit the middle of the white, but you can lose that over a period of time. 
I think he's striking it better. I think his confidence has come from that. He's certainly making more breaks than he's been making in the last couple of years, and uh, he's enjoying his snooker again. And it, it does goes to show that this time last year we were talking about whether Stephen Hendry would ever return, and he's done so in absolutely spectacular fashion. For, for you fellas, is there always a feeling that there's one more title in you? There's one more something good around the corner? Well, I always felt with Stephen Henry there was, but of course, trying to nail it down to it being the World Championship mm. wasn't easy. Um, but we do know that he's a course and distance winner, and I do think that comes into the equation. He feels comfortable in, in the venue. It would be a fantastic achievement, beyond anything perhaps that had ever been done in the game, for him to come back in the modern day game and win this. Uh, he's not getting too carried away with things, but there are people starting to say, actually, the standard he's producing is good enough. Indeed, and now it's Stephen Maguire. What sort of match-up is that going to be between these two great Scots? Well, very tough. We mentioned earlier that Maguire hasn't really hit top form yet. That's an interesting factor, isn't it? They've got the utmost respect for each other. It's a match... Well, it's got, there's, there's plenty of prospects there. What we're going to see, I don't know. If Stephen keeps up the score, and he's got a chance. OK, well, looking forward to that one. Congratulations to Stephen. Uh, the defending champion, John Higgins, on his way home today. We'll hopefully be hearing from John very shortly. But I did promise you that if that...